Good evening. I'm Ariana Cohen Halberstam. I am the artistic director of Boston Jewish Film. Welcome to our 32nd annual festival and to our talk tonight about The Crossing. It is rare to find great Jewish films from Norway and great Jewish films that can be shared across generations. So I was so glad to find The Crossing when it was submitted to our festival. And it is such a pleasure to have the director with us here tonight. I wanna take a moment to thank tonight's sponsor, JCDS, Boston's Jewish Community Day School. And now please welcome me in, please join me in welcoming Johanna Hel Helgland, uh, the director <laughs> of tonight's film. I practiced that too. <laughs> welcome. I Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. So it's one o'clock in the morning there, so a, a very special thank you for being with us uh, all the way from Norway tonight. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to start by asking you about how you decided to make a film with, of this story. Um, this is your first film, uh, first feature film, and it's a very ambitious one. It, it deals not only with the topic of refugees and the Holocaust, um, but with children, and it's made for audiences of all ages. Um, what was your inspiration, and why did you decide to tackle this ambitious project? Uh, well, Maya Lunde, the author, she she came to me with uh, the idea. We worked on several projects, and and then she said, "I have this idea for a film for a film," and this is maybe ten years ago. Uh, about four children having to flee to neutral Sweden during the Second World War. And I don't know, it just hit me at that point that uh, I had never seen a film made in Norway about the Second World War made for uh, a young audience or children. And uh, I think it was about time. And also uh, both are very dramatic, important and also, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it just, it was a good, good idea, I think, and uh, a bit frightening as well, as you say, because it's, it's a uh, very, it, it's a big theme. Mm -hmm. How, I, the film works so well, both watching as an adult, but I think also works really well for children. How did you sort of come to create a film um, that works across across ages. What it what did you do to make sure that that was the case? Well, uh, our goal was to make uh, a family audience film, uh, but mainly our target group was children from the age of uh, nine, ten to to uh, or actually eight to twelve was the main target group for this film, and. Um, but I, I was very specific about one thing, and that was that I wanted it to take children seriously, because I think so many children's film um, underestimate kids. And I think they need <laughs> films with, with the proper themes and, and uh, people that they feel empowered by. And um, that was this project as well I, I don't know if I I, I I don't know if I answered your questions because of the questions right now but uh, yeah. well well I'm curious also you know the film I guess I guess you did in that the film was actually your you made the film for younger audiences and it's almost it's great that people of, of other ages can enjoy it too but you had a younger audience in mind when creating the film yes uh, Gerda is so sorry. Go ahead. I'm, you were cutting. No, off. no, that's fine. <laughs> you can go on. Yeah. Well, I, I think you know. I think Gerda is such a powerful character in the film. Um, can you talk a little bit about you know how much she came from the original script, or or how you sort of built her as this as this heroine? No, she was that definitely in the script as well. And Maya and I talked a lot about that. We wanted a girl in this part and uh, we also wanted uh, a strong uh, girl with uh, who, who is uh, adventurous and, and uh, not scared 
where she becomes scared uh, uh, during the film or during uh, yeah but the but in the beginning she's more like this adventurous type that uh, uh, the opposite of her brother Otto who is very conservative scared uh, and and tied up in a way by rules and demands I think one of the, the really beautiful moments in the film is when she, we see Gerda sort of lose her lose her bravery um, and then yeah. regain it um, when she says it's a, at the end she says this is a storyteller's cloak. Um, can you talk about the important and of course she's the narrator as well. Can you talk about um, the importance of sharing stories like these with young audiences and, and sort of how you see the role of, of telling stories as a, as a heroic act? I don't know if, um, uh, I think uh, Gerda, that was also one uh, way to tell this story with this uh, very dark theme uh, in a way. It was that Gerda has this uh, access to her fantasy and she's adventurous and she's a storyteller as well so when things uh, go really when as in the cabin she she turns to to the the story about the three musketeers to kind of I think I think what children are better at than we are is that even if things are really dark, they always find light in a way. And, and, and that's a part of this story as well, that um, the children always find something, something worth. <laughs> um, I don't know how to express that, but uh, to find light in the darkness. I think that's what the kids do in this film. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What what is Holocaust education look like in Norway? Uh, did the actors, for example, know this story or similar stories when you cast them? We talked a lot about that as well because they don't know that much about it. I think they know less about it than my generation do. Uh, at the same time, they're very curious about it so when we start to talk about the second world war they want to know more and uh, one of the first things we did was actually when when the children were found uh, and ca casted we went to the holocaust center and we had uh, a guide that was kind of made for that age group or for them especially where we talked about uh, what happened during the Second World War. And what I have discovered is that girls are really curious about this period of time. Uh, and that's, I think, most girls still read Anne Frank's diary, for instance, uh, here in Norway. And that was almost obligatory when I went to school uh, many years ago. <laughs> and, and I think uh, it's still in many schools, they still read that book at the point. And I also know that a lot of teachers in Norway are happy about this film because it's uh, hard to talk about. And this is a way to start a conversation about uh, both the Second World War and the Holocaust as well for so that age group. Mm. So the film opened three weeks before lockdown. Um, were school groups going to it who um, what was the reception to the film in Norway? A lot of school groups were supposed to go and see it, uh, but then we had the lockdown. Uh, but in Norway, we're only 5.5 million people, and it was seen by 140,000 uh, before the lockdown. And that's quite good here in Norway. So it has reached out to a lot of people. And, and, and the feedback is that uh grown-ups and children have really good conversations after the film uh and suddenly uh in, in i mean in every family there are stories from this period of time and uh, 
many of them haven't been told before even to the next generation and that's uh, part of what we wished for as well that that these stories uh, are told and passed on I, I just want to say to everyone if you have questions please put them in the chat and um, we will invite you to ask them to Joanna. Um, I thought it was really interesting that you opened talking about sharing history that you opened and closed with black and white documentary footage. Did you want to include that from the beginning? Uh, can you talk about your choice to do that? A little? Yeah, it was actually in the script uh, from the beginning. Um, but we chose to focus on children in the opening because when we see documentary footage from this period of time, especially here in Norway, it's always, you know, grown-ups and soldiers and, and working people and uh, very seldom we see children, actually. So uh, we, we looked for that specifically because it was, it is a story told from a child's perspective and that was important for us to, to send that message from the start that this is about the children. And was that was that footage easy to find? There was definitely footage in there that yeah. I hadn't seen before. Yeah, it is because we have a state. Still, we have a TV channel owned by the state government or state. So, uh, and they have this archive that is uh, fantastic. So, uh, and uh, yeah, we have something uh, during the war. You probably had that in the states as well. You had like weekly. Uh, uh, news news updates, yeah, and and a lot of the footage is from those newsreels, yeah. and obviously also some some German footage that you have seen before, okay. yeah. And the the film is shot. Um, we go from black and white, and then you turn into this. The tones in the film are really beautiful, and um, you these icy scenes in when they're crossing uh, those fields versus the warmth in the homes. Um, can you talk a little bit about the colors you used in the film and the costuming yeah. too, which I thought was really creative. Yeah, we, we wanted it to feel warm and safe in the beginning. And, and then when, when the parents are arrested, Gerdas and Otto's parents are arrested in the middle of the night, everything turns a bit dark and and uh, it's harder to or, uh, orient uh, or to to uh, yeah uh, and and everything turns a bit bleak and uh, but then colors come back after a while uh, when the children also find each other uh, and I mean, this is a small budget film. It's a $1.4 million film. So it was shot in 30 days and we didn't have any artificial light outside uh, and uh, everything is shot on location. So we couldn't, we obviously, we were very dependent on what weather we, we got. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we, of course we wanted it to be winter all the way with snow, but, uh, the weather gods didn't uh, want that. So we were quite lucky actually, actually because when the children arrived at the forest, then it started to snow and, and we could use that as a narrative in a way that, okay, that's logical. So they're, as they go into the forest, it, the winter comes as well. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, Everything and and also winter in Norway is very. Uh, we have like daylight five hours a day or something, and we shot it in December. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> we, we were running on set, you know, to to get all the scenes and all the yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's not like we have been. <laughs> it, it, yeah, we yeah. Uh, we, we're lucky with the Scandinavian light outside. Everything is very beautiful in the winter, but For at the same hours. time, challenging, yeah, challenge, challenging to to make a film in the middle of winter in Norway with a yeah. small budget. Yeah, <laughs> and especially with the child actors, I imagine um, were, had they acted before or or oh. uh, no, they, they, they were... none of them had acted before at all. So. Uh, oh. 
but I was I was lucky. I mean, they uh, they uh, were really good and very professional and uh, easy to work with. And it was a very good group. I mean, it was important to find a group that actually worked together as well, socially. And, hmm. Yeah, Gerda and, and Otto really felt like brother and sister. I mean, and, and so did Sarah and Daniel. They almost looked alike. Um, the casting was really hmm. great. How did you find them? Did it was uh, a very conventional, like uh, we had a casting agency and they went out to schools and and uh, you could come to auditions. And then we had like, I think we didn't, because of the budget again, we didn't have a lot of children. We had like a hundred maybe. And then mm -hmm. we found found the four from these uh, hundreds and, and we found them quite, the girls we found quite, uh, fast actually it was like two rounds or something and then and then uh, it was obvious that it was them but the boys a bit harder to find especially at that age where things start to be a bit awkward and they're a bit self-conscious and and um, uh, yeah and the thing with casting children now is that they're so self-aware because they have their iPhones and they take selfies all the time so it was uh, it's important to find children that doesn't have this self-consciousness about, yeah, or see themselves from the outside to their camera in a way. That's such an interesting point. That must be very different than directing kids ten, even 10 years ago. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, that's a big difference, actually. They're so used to, to look at themselves through the lens. Yeah. Have they seen the film? The yes, film. they're very proud. Yeah, I think, uh, and and they're very different. So uh, Gerda, for instance, Anna, she, she's not like, oh, do you want to be an actor? I don't know. I'll see. <laughs> and, then, and her brother Otto is like, uh, I want to be the new James Bond. I'm going to be the new James Bond. <laughs> so they're, really, they're, so, they're so Great. different. I mean, yeah. <laughs> And the little girl that plays Sarah, she's like, I don't know. <laughs> she's she she she's just an enigma. She's yeah. They're very different. She's very adorable. How great, how old great were, kids? How, how old were the actors when they were that you cast? Uh, she had the youngest had just turned seven, uh, and uh, the oldest was twelve. Otto was twelve mm, when we started filming. There's and, there is a question. Mm. Oh, sorry. Go. No, that's fine. <laughs> There's a there's just a question from the audience from Mary about the kids um, and expanding off it. She said the kids you cast are amazing. Can you speak to the changing relationships of Otto and Gerda and Sarah and Daniel, both as characters and also as working with young actors? So as they were were all new actors and curious, you know, mm. the, obviously their relationships change a lot in the film. Did that change the relationship also of the cast to each other? Um, no, I don't think so. We we had we we used a lot of time before we started shooting to to talk about the characters and to to uh, to be together and and rehearse in a way, uh, improvise a little, and and uh, and they had all also very different ways of, of uh, going into the material themselves. I mean, Anna Gerda, she was reading the script uh, probably five times before I met her the first time. So she was really into it. And I, she's, she had been thinking a lot about her character already. And, uh, and the boys were a bit more intuitive about that. And uh, yeah, but the dynamics between the characters were quite easy. I must, mean, Daniel is the provider in a way. His his purpose is to take care of his sister, so he's a he's he has to act like a grown up way too early. And uh, and Otto is is this rigid, uh, uh, scared boy, and Gerda is the adventurous type. So it was quite clear what parts they were playing all the way. Hmm. Though, of course, Otto at some point becomes the caretaker and the brave one when he sort of yeah. becomes the distraction and 
Um, we see their growth as each of the characters' growth in this film. Yes, and he loved that. That one. <laughs> <laughs> he really loved that uh, twist in the story. I think that was important for him because he he, he uh, the boy we casted he was very outgoing and and uh, uh, to play this character that was kind of that was a bit hard for him actually. So he, he was happy that he became the hero in the at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, there's a question here from Tatiana. Thank you for this beautiful, inspiring movie. I'm wondering how Norway is dealing with its involvement in deporting the 771 Jews. Uh, it's a dark chapter, I think, because uh, in Norway, as probably in a lot of other countries as well, uh, we like to tell the tales about the uh, resistant movement and the heroes. Uh, but it was much more complex than that. And, and the police was helping uh, was was under the Nazi government as well so they helped with the deputation and and we also know now later that also the resistant movement and, and leading leading uh, figures in the resistant movement actually knew about uh, the deportation before it happened and could have done something about it if they so yeah it's complex and uh, mm. And there's, it's made a film now actually about the Holocaust as well here in, in Norway. So it's uh, an awareness that is kind of, it's, uh, it's coming, but it's, it took some time to get there actually to start to talk about responsibility uh, during the Second World War in Norway. When mm. did that, when did the, that sort of come out um about the police being involved? Was it more recently uh, no, that, or? No, that's, that has been known for a while, but that the resistance movement was, had knew about it. That's quite new for a lot of people. I didn't know that. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, as, as uh, I mean, my, my grandfather, he, uh, he was a young man during the war and uh, I've never heard, you know, and, and part of the resistance movement as well, but I've never heard stories uh, about, yeah, you, you, you don't hear the, the stories of a resistance movement that really didn't take its responsibility uh, before now and uh, but there were a lot of common people that did uh, yeah people uh, there are a lot of heartwarming good stories uh, about uh, people helping and, and hiding and and yeah there, there's a related question here from Mark's mm. Um, Silaber, do you know about what percentage of Jews who escaped to Sweden returned to Norway after the war, and also about how many Jews live in Norway today? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know, actually, but I think most came back. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think so. And how many Jews live in Norway now? Not that many, I think, uh, because we actually tried to find Jewish children for the part, the Jewish parts, and that mm. was that wasn't possible actually to find in Oslo. But yeah, I, I'm not sure. Sorry, but I can Google Acor it. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, I just did. Yeah, seven hundred and seventy, yeah. which is, yeah. is really not yeah. very many. No, yeah. no, yeah. Um, and so you did try to find Jews. Was was that because you of, of you felt like representation was important, or you thought that they might be able to bring a personal um, yeah, story both to actually, the role? Both actually, yeah. Uh, but the casting agency, uh, uh, we went to the synagogue and we uh, we talked to, and and there weren't many children at in that age group that uh, we had a few. Um, yeah, but then again, it, it 
it's it's all a matter of who who can play the part in the end as well yeah mm. and those kids were great uh, there's a comment here but maybe you can expand upon it um, from larry i thought that for sure that otto was going to be shot and killed and was surprised he survived the chase i was wondering if at the end the picnic and reunion um this that's after the black and white uh footage yeah. was a dream um it was almost too happy of an ending that everyone mm. survived given the time and the circumstances can you mm. it almost it almost is like a coda at the end after the documentary footage um mm. can you talk a little bit about that and, and that almost dreamlike sequence yeah it is almost a dreamlike sequence i think but at the same time for me the the, the last picture of the kids or you know uh, the returning kids uh, I think it's really important for the child audience I think it's important we talked a lot about that that Gerda and Otto comes back that the children in the audience see that they come back to their parents and also to see that the children are united at the end if it was a grown-up movie maybe or a film for the the grown-up audience then it wouldn't have been uh, that dreamy, maybe, <laughs> or maybe that happy. But when the target group is children, I think that's really important. Mm. You you said that um, one of your goals was to start conversations between older audiences and younger audiences of the film. Um, what sort of conversations do you want this film to inspire? Just that children start to ask questions about the Second World War, about what did you what did you do, Grandma, during the Second World War? How was things? What did you eat? Uh, did you know any Jewish people? I mean, just to start asking questions. Uh, it's hard to talk about the Holocaust, obviously, but I think we need to talk about it, and uh, and I think uh, for us as grown-ups as well it's very uh, good to to try to to talk about it with our kids to try to find the right words and and uh, reflect on the past especially there... now uh, it's quite topical now i think with the fascism rising in europe and and in the us as well and and a lot of refugees 70 million refugees and half of them are uh, under the age of 18 so uh, hmm. hopefully it can connect with today as well yeah um so where if if the film obviously the theatrical run in norway was was shortened um ha, are, is it available for streaming in norway yet or how are how are people seeing it there uh yeah now you can stream it now uh i don't know i haven't i'm not into how many has seen it online <laughs> i haven't i don't know the numbers there but uh i can see it on lists like popular rental movies on online uh, here um and i get messages from now and then from people who have seen it and and uh yeah and I respond to it and uh yeah uh, the response is very good and what i was hoping for actually that people say that they have seen it together as a family and they have uh talked about it after do you think your next film will be on a similar topic are you working on something else at this point I got the same question. Would you make? Would you like to make another Second World War film? And I, I don't. I, and I said, no. It depends on in the, the story actually, <laughs> and, and if it uh, it's engaging. I, there's so many Second World War films made in Norway uh, all the time. Uh, we never get tired of it here. Uh, I don't know why it is like that. Um, but I think this had another angle to it, and that was the, what I liked about it. And uh, yeah, are there other are other are films about that period for children that you have seen or that have inspired you? No, I I saw a film when I was a child, but it was not for a child audience. But it was a little girl 
that played a part. And that was about uh, a daughter of a uh, Norwegian woman who had had a relationship to German soldiers because those women were treated really uh, badly after the war here. They cut their hair off and, and their children mm. were uh, kind of yeah badly treated by by fellow children and in school and everything so that's another story again and and uh, and it made a really big impression on me at that point but as i said it's never been made a film for children about the second world war here so uh yeah there, there's a question here that i I, I actually was thinking the same thing when watching the film. It talks about the old Nazi lady who turned, uh, who oh, turned the yeah. kids in. Seems like the witch in Hansel and Gretel was that on mm. purpose. And of course, you know, especially when she, they walk into the kitchen and there's this flame there. And she's over <laughs> the stove. Yeah. So was that intentional? Yes, it was in a way to to uh, to nod that at the fairy tales, and that was also, you know, the part part of how can we tell this story uh, for the young audience? It has to have a flair of, of uh, a bit of a fairy tale in it as well. Uh, if it's too realistic, it, it would be too, uh, too uh, scary in a way. And, and, uh, but the old lady is, is what most children think is the most scary character in the whole film actually and that's because she seems to be nice and then she's really not and they don't expect her to be uh, evil but she is even if they've seen Hans and Gretel they don't <laughs> I mean as a, as a grown-up when you see her come come walking towards them you know you know for sure that she's not a good person but the children seem to rely on her being good until until she turns mm. <laughs> well we're i think we're aware because there's the you know the uh ticket taker on the train who says don't trust anybody and then you meet yeah. this woman but the the there's all of the characters sort of seem to play a different role i'm i'm curious about the creation of the kinder i'll say nazi who um who gerda mm. sort of charms with with her questions about his sister um why why did you create a character like that? Because I think again in in films for children uh good versus evil is uh very often black and white and and we know as grown-ups we know that that's not the case and we also know that that there were a lot of unlucky uh, unhappy young soldiers uh, German soldiers and uh, we thought it was important to show that uh, things aren't black and white the the nice old lady could be the opposite and and uh, and a young German soldier can have a heart and Hello? Otto himself yeah and, yeah and Otto and Otto himself you know has this turn of consciousness in the in the film and is figuring these things out and he I think probably I imagine many children connect to him as well as Goethe. Yeah I think so so it's important to tell children that sometimes it's hard to know what's right and wrong and yeah. it's it's okay to change your mind <laughs> about yeah. things yeah yeah I only see myself now you disappeared from me I don't know why but oh. uh I think was, you, you're spotlighted, yeah, that, but I'm that, here. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I guess my, my you know, I, I would like to know where people, you know, the film is obviously screening at the festival and people should tell their friends to see it um, through November 15th. Is it, do you have plans for distribution in the States? Uh, where does it go next? Or how can people find uh, out about it? Uh, it's Neil from Manishma. How do you say that? Manemsha Manemsha film? Films. Manemsha yeah. films uh, who's the distributor here. So I I don't know. I think his plan was to put it up in in the cinema, but but obviously that's not that easy right now. So uh, we'll see. I don't I don't know what his plans are right now. <laughs> I'll ask. Well, him. It's, it's screening <laughs> yeah. at many Jewish film festivals. So do tell your friends around around the country to look out for it and, and hopefully at some children's festivals and other international festivals uh, before it I, eventually, I, I hope that it does hit uh, a wider platform. 
but it's, thank you so I'm oh, sorry no but it's really nice to be represented at your festival and and yeah uh, thank you for that we're really pleased to to be showing your film with us and and that you stayed up till close to 2 a.m to be here tonight um so thank pleasure. you and thank you it, good luck with the rest i know you're on lockdown for a few more weeks so good luck there in, in norway and um, I look forward to, to seeing whatever it is that you create next. And, and thank you and uh, good luck on the rest of your festival. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you everyone who's tuned in and thank you again to tonight's sponsor, JCDS. Uh, we will see you at some more films soon. Thank you, Jana. Good night. Thank you. Bye.